Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I will be teaching you how to make this simple traffic system using geometry nodes. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's hide this scene and add in a new plane. This plane will be the basis of our roads and then our traffic system. So let's go and make a few edges going in various directions. This one will be going over here, and I'll copy this and move it over a little bit, just so that we have two of these right here. I'll keep it simple, just two of these, just starting out, but we can make it more complicated later on. So let's add in our geometry node editor, add in a new geometry node, and now what we are going to do is convert this mesh into a curve. So to do that, we use the mesh to curve option. There we go. And what we want to do next is make it so that these turns are a little more curved instead of just straight like they are now. So to do that, we are going to use the fillet curve node. There we go. Switch this to poly and increase the count to something like 10. As we could see, this changes the curvature of the, or the turn radius. So we get nice curvy roads. I'll go and hide everything else in the scene just to make this a little more visible. So now let's go and make our actual road mesh. This is actually very, very simple. We're just going to use the curve to mesh node and add in a curve primitive line and attach it right here. Right now, as you can see, we're getting some errors here. That's because we just need to make this road uh, go along the X axis instead of the Z axis. So here I'll do negative 0.25 and this one will be positive 0.25. There we go. Now we have our road, and afterward we could use a material, set material node, and I'll just apply the gray material. There we go. Now we have our road. Let's add in some frames just so that we could keep this all organized. And I'll put a join geometry node right here because we'll be joining our traffic system there very shortly. Now what we want to do is scatter points along this road that go along it and that loop around once they're done. So to do that, let's use a mesh line or curve line or mesh line. Hmm. Mesh line, I think will work. There we go. And then what we want to use is a uh, sample curve node. Curve, sample curve. There we go. And as we could see, with the sample curve node, we could get the position, tangent, and normal of a specific point along this curve. So to do this, to show how it works, we're going to use a set position node on our line right here and put the position into there. And if we hook this up into our output, we can see, oh wait, I need to apply a mesh to points node. Sorry about that. Now we could see that this, these points are now moving along our curve. Actually, I'll join this up right here just so that we could see where along the road it is. There we go. As we can see, as we increase the length right here, it is moving along the road, just, just as we want. But we could go a step further. Let's add in a random value node. There we go. And let's switch this to factor. What this does is it'll make the point go along the curve according to the start point is 0 and the end point is 1. So as we could see, as we move this along, by the time it hits 1, it'll hit the end of the entire curve. So if we hook a random value node into here, we could see that the points are now scattered around this curve randomly. There we go. And I could just in increase this over time. And there we go, tons of points along this curve. But let's start animating them. I'm going to add in another frame just to organize this a little bit more for you folks. There we go. I'll put one up here. There we go. So to animate this, we'll need to use a math node set to add so that we can move these along. But as you can see, the points are moving, but then they just end over at the end of the curve. What we want them to do is loop around. So to do that, let's add in a fraction node right here. And as we see, as we move this around, uh, it never really ends. It just cycles them back to the beginning. So if we were to put in a time frame, let's, let's add in a value node. Value node, input hashtag frame. This will update with the frame number of the scene. So right now it's frame 38. And then we'll add in a divide node so that we could set the speed. I'll set it to 100. And if we hook these together, every 100 frames, a point will go from the beginning to the end. So let's increase that to about 500. 
There we go, that seems pretty good. And now we could do some other fun stuff with this. As we can see, all these points are directly in the middle of this thing. We don't want that, we want them to be offset. But we can do that because we have the normal data of our curve right here. So to make it affect our position, we need to use a vector math add node. Put this right here and hook this right into there. And then if we hook in the normal right here, we could see that all these are offset, but they're all offset a bit too much. So we need to change that. To change that, let's set this to multiply. Hook in your normal input to a multiply node and this out into there. And as we can see, if we move this up, we could set where on the curve these are, on this side of the road or this side of the road. Hmm, I'm going to put in some reroutes just to make this a little more visible for you folks. There we go. Right there. And right there, just so that you could see the inputs better. But now, what if we want uh, the cars to be in different points on the road at different times? Let's put in another random value node and plug this into the multiply and as we can see oh wait one thing we need to do first is randomize that make sure it's on a seed that is different than the one right here actually i'll set this one to five just so that when we add in a new one it won't be the same there we go as we could see if we constrain this a bit more to like uh point two and negative point two there we go now we have all sorts of points moving around on the road at different just at different points that's good. And now, since we're at this point, I think we could start instancing our little car. As we could see, we have a nice little car right here. And we could start putting it into our scene. So to do that, let's use an instance on points node. And we need to drag and drop our car. Let me label this car. We could go and drag and drop our car object into the scene. There we go. And hook it into the instance point uh, part. There we go. That's pretty good. And now if we take out our points into the join geometry node and put in our instance on points, we could see that the car is here, but we still have a few problems left. As we could see right here, the cars are not moving correctly. They're not oriented in the right direction, but we can change that as well by inputting. We have the tangent info and that tangent info will give us our rotation. So to do that, let's use a utilities align Euler to vector node. And if we hook in our tangent into here, then this into our rotation, we can see that these are now facing in the right direction. Pretty good. And we could set the uh, pivot axis to Z so that they won't tilt over time. One thing to note with this is that if we set this to an angle, uh, the orientation can mess up a bit. If we set this to auto, we could see that these are a little bit tilted and we don't quite want that. To fix that, we just set this to Z. Let's move this up right there. So they're moving correctly on the Z axis, but we want them to be oriented to correctly on the X axis as well. So to do that, we just add in another rotation node, hook that into there. Sorry if this is getting a little bit complicated. This isn't the easiest tutorial to follow. So if you are following along, good for you. Uh, this is a very semi-difficult topic to work on. There we go. So now that we have this, to uh, reorient these on the x-axis, we just have to switch this to, or y. Is it y? Yes, it is y. There we go. So now these are oriented correctly when they're going downhill. Now one thing to note that the road angle might still be a little bit off. I'm not, I think that's a blender side issue, not quite a node setup issue. So if you have that, just try to make your roads a little less uh, Z, uh, uh, the heights, don't make the heights all too different. So there we go for that. I'll go and lower the road back to a normal value. And yeah, that is basically the entire tutorial. Uh, but we could add in a few more bells and whistles. Let me just move all this around so that we can get, uh, make it a bit more organized. So there we go. We're in the final stretch, folks. Final stretch. So as we could see, these are all moving quite nice. There's a bit of clipping, but it's not the biggest thing to worry about. Uh, let's add in a random scale node. So another random value node, set a random seed. Let's plug this into the scale. As we could see, as we increase this, we get different scales for different cars. Oh, and also one thing to note, uh, the cars do not have to be just one object. They could be a collection of objects. And uh, yeah, so there's that. And anything else to go over? 
We can set a random speed to these vehicles. If we go and copy a random value node and put it right over here into the divide, I don't entirely recommend doing this because clipping goes up quite a bit when you do this. So let's set this to 500 right here and right here. And let's set this to 1000. This might look good for a oh, 1000, sorry. This might look good for some of your scenes, but as you can see, since they're going at different speeds, uh, they start colliding into each other and it might not be what you want. And also let's, uh, we could reduce the amount of cars in the scene. There we go. And this is this is good for a background asset. If you need cars just traveling in the background, this is pretty much perfect for that. But yeah, that is basically the entire tutorial. Uh, what else? Uh, for the materials, if you're wondering how I got the random material per car, let's go into the shader editor. In the car material, there we go, right in here, You, if you use the object info node, you could get a random value per instance right here. So each of these has a random value to them, and then I set this to a color, and then as we can see, there we go, random color per car, and that's pretty much it. Again, if you want to make a new road, you just copy the road over to here, maybe add in a few subdivisions, move it up a little bit so that they're not colliding. And yeah, that is basically the entire effect. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I, I already said subscribe, didn't I? Check out my Twitter account, my Gumroad account. There's lots of free and paid stuff on there. And uh, if you're around on Twitter, show me what you make with this tutorial. I would love to see it. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.